I will never forget. I had to be no much older than 13 years old. And it was the summertime. And I had my cousin come down from Houston, one of my favorite cousins. Um, and my dad asked us, what do we want to do? So I said, uh, we want to go to Six Flags. So my dad's like, all right, cool. So my dad take us, takes us to Six Flags and we're sitting outside. He said, look, I'm going to give y'all this amount of money. You know, he gave us $50 a piece or something like that or a hundred and something dollars, but gave me the money. and was like, you're in charge of the money. So when people want to buy something, um, you know, you, um, you know, distribute the money. So it was me. It was two, two of my cousins. Um, and so I'm like, okay, fine. So we go into Six Flags, man, we having a great time. I uh, got my two cousins with me and we just, man, we're just enjoying life. And so my cousin says, hey, let's go inside this store. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So we go in the store and we're looking around. And as we're looking around, I look at my cousin, I see him sticking something in his pocket. And I'm like, why, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, I, I know you're not stealing because my dad gave us money. Uh, and uh, my cousin Brian, so shout out to Brian. If you see this video, man, <laughs> hope all is well. I'm putting you out there. Uh, so uh, I said, what you doing? He said, I'm like, my dad gave us money. He was like, don't worry about the money. We can save the money, man. He said, get what you want, put it in your pocket, bro. Let's steal it. I'm like, I'm not stealing. Nah, I'm not doing that. Like my dad would kill me. He was like, come on, man. He's like, my nickname's Cat. He's like, come on, Cat, we won't get caught. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't wanna do that, man. Not on my dad's watch. I, my dad don't play that. I was like, nah, man, if we get caught, bro, I'm gonna be in trouble. So he's like, man, we're not gonna get caught. So we're going back and forth about it and he convinced me. And so um, stuck it in my pocket, whatever it was, and he and I, both walk out the store. He walks out before me and I walk out after him. And as soon as we walk out, a guy walks walks out of the store and walks in front of us and says, you want to return that what you just stole to the, stole from the store? And we're like, what are you talking about? He's like, I just see you guys steal from the store. Give it to me. And so we're like, all right, you know, the jig's up. So we empty our pockets. We gave him what we stole. And he said, now follow me. And we're like, who are you? He's like, uh, I'm the uh, security of the store so this guy's one of those undercover um you know works walks around in regular clothes security guys and you know watches who you know theft prevention that's what they're called so he's theft prevention so he takes us in a little office at six flags and you know get my dad's phone number call my dad and he comes and picks us up and so um you know i mean he he he's going off on the car on the ride home you know giving it to us and you know talking about you know i can't believe that you got caught stealing like why would you steal this and that and so we get back home he said, uh, I'm going to deal with you. I'll deal with you later. My dad always told me two things. The first thing, which is this video was about, which is about always be a leader. Never follow anybody. My dad believed in that wholeheartedly. He believed that Burke men do not follow. We are all leaders. And he lived by that. That is his creed. The second thing was, is if I got caught doing anything or if I got in trouble um, at the age of 13 and up, then it wouldn't be any more spankings. He was gonna whoop me. <laughs> and so when I say whoop, I mean like put your hands up and defend yourself as a man because these are coming, you know? And so uh, as he was dropping me off at home, because he, he took me home after that, he said, um, my dad didn't live in the house with me. So this is after my mom and dad split up. So after he's dropping me off, he said, you know, I'm disappointed in you. And he said, and you know the reason why? I said, yes, sir. He said, why? I said, because I stole. He said, no, that's not why. He said, I'm disappointed and ups up upset with you because you followed your cousin. He said, now, if you would have told me that you decided to steal, you would probably would have still been in trouble, but I wouldn't have been this disappointed in you. I'm disappointed because you followed somebody else in their lead and what they did. He said, what did I always tell you about leadership? Who are you? He said, I'm a, I told him I, I'm a leader. And he said, now, were you leading in that situation? No, sir. He said, all right. Well, that's why I'm disappointed in you. Not because you stole, but because you followed somebody else's lead and you weren't a leader in that situation. And man, when he dropped me off, I walked in the house and there's that, that shame and that, that guilt and that feeling of being a disappointment to my father sat on me so heavy and it sat on me for weeks until he came back and actually whooped my butt and I had to put the hands up and defend myself and I didn't do it. Crawled up like a baby, like, ah, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, uh, so dad, yeah, you beat my butt. But lesson learned, 
This video is about teaching your sons to be leaders. It is so important right now in the generation and time that we're living in that you men pour into your sons and drive them, force them to be leaders because our society is producing weak men. Our school system is designed to make our boys passive and everything in our culture, movies, TV, the education system, books, all of it is producing weak and soft boys, which weak and soft boys grow up to be weak and soft men. And we all know that a dangerous man is the one that controls this world. The dangerous men are the one that protect this world. The dangerous men are the ones that protect women and children and protect other men. But the dangerous man is the calm man. He's the man that knows he's dangerous, but knows how to sustain himself and keep himself out of harm's way and avoid danger at all costs until it's time to be dangerous. Jordan Peterson says that the world needs dangerous men because dangerous men are what shape and mold the world. So if you don't push your sons to be leaders men, then your men will be weak and they won't be dangerous. A dangerous man will be led by his woman. He won't have a backbone or have the fortitude to make tough decisions. He won't have the backbone or the fortitude to stand up against bullies. He won't have the backbone or fortitude to stand tall with his back straight and his chest held high and say, no, I'm a leader. I'm not going to follow this kid. I'm not going to follow this guy down the wrong path. And many times in my life, I began to follow people down the wrong path and was quickly awakened by what my dad instilled in me and put in my heart and put in my spirit about me being a leader. And I was convicted in those moments and had to immediately leave those situations or wheedle my way out because I found out or felt like I wasn't being a leader that my dad called me to be. I don't feel like we push leadership on our men, on our boys enough. Now, that goes, now let's take it to the men. That means if you're pushing your sons to be leaders, that means you should be convicted as well to step into your full leadership role. Look, you were created by God to be a leader. You're supposed to be leading your household. If you're on a job, you should be desiring leadership roles. So many times I have men come to me and tell me about opportunities or positions that they could take that they were being offered at their job and they ask me, what do I think? I say, take it. Look, even if sometimes it feels like it's only a lateral move, I always advise or suggest a man to take the role. Take the role of more responsibility because once you take responsibility into your hands, it develops you and makes you more of a well-rounded man because the more responsibility and uh, uh, um, pressure that you can handle as a man, the more sustainable will it make you be along the way. If you never put yourself through the fire and test yourself, then you'll never be able to handle really tough situations and you'll never be able to really lead a family. You'll never really be able to really lead your woman. You'll never really be able to fully lead in any kind of capacity if you keep running from leadership roles. So I always tell men, don't run from the leadership role. Well, I know it's not gonna be, the, the, the Kelly, the money is not even, the, 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 is the money is not even a real raise. They're only paying me an extra whatever a year. So what? I'm gonna have to work more hours. So what? Yeah, but man, the, the managers they don't they, they don't get to you know go home early, and when somebody calls in, they have to go. Yeah. So what? Look, I worked in a company that I was a manager, and I ran from it when I was young as well. As a matter of fact, I was the youngest manager in our company history at 21 years old, and then stepped down. But. I knew I was supposed to be a leader, so I always came right back to that leadership role. So I always had the desire to come right back to it, and I did some years later, and I left that company being a manager because that's who I was and that's what was inside of me. And so I really had a problem, uh, uh, per se, with uh, taking orders. Not really taking orders because I, I don't really have a problem with following a man, a good leader, but when you know you're supposed to be leading, it feels uncomfortable to take orders from somebody that you know you're supposed to be in the same position as them. And so once you start growing, that starts to happen. And if that's happening to you guys, you know what you're supposed to be doing. You know if you're listening to a speaker and you're supposed to be speaking, that you're going to be convicted by it. You're going to start feeling bad when they say certain things because you're supposed to be doing what they're doing, right? That was happening to me in church in my younger years when I knew I was supposed to be preaching. I would be listening to my pastor and he'd be talking and I'd be like, man, I could see myself as him. And it started making me feel bad because I was running from me using my voice and using my gift. That's what leadership does to you. When God calls you to lead, regardless of what else is going on in your life, when you see somebody that is doing what you are supposed to be doing, it's going to make you feel like crap because you're running from it. So if you're running from true leadership, you're going to feel like crap. Now, imagine what happens to your sons. 
Imagine what happens to your daughters when they see you in leadership. My father owned a mortgage company for 15 years. When I would go out to his office and see him leading in that capacity, man, it did something to me. It made me want to be an entrepreneur. It made me want to be a business owner at a young age. And people would ask me, what do I want to do when I grew up? I'm like, I don't know, but I know I'm going to be rich and successful and I'm going to own a business because that's what my dad does. And I always admired the fact that he started his own business. He had people working under him and alongside of him and he was the boss. He owned it. He was a leader. And he always instilled in me and drove into me the desire to be a leader. And he required that of me. Look, man, you have to require of your sons to be leaders. And to top that off, women want to be with leaders because leaders are winners. If you're not leading, then you're losing. And no woman wants to follow a loser. A woman wants to be with a strong man that's strong enough to tell her no <laughs> when the time requires it and also has the fortitude to stand up to a man and tell him you're not going to disrespect my woman like that you're not going to disrespect my family like that and you're not going to disrespect me like that because I'm not the guy that's going to take that from you I'm not the guy that's going to take that because your backbone is strong because you're a leader desire leadership man I'm telling you if you're running from leadership roles then you're running from your true destiny of walking in male fortitude and we have so many soft weak men out here eating Kentucky fried chicken and walking around filled with estrogen and not having the strength to stand up and speak out when something's wrong that's why men won't run for political positions that's why men don't desire roles in churches anymore that's why men don't want to go and be a principal or or or, or be the man manager of a company or jobs. Why? Because they're running from leadership because they're weak. And the only way that we're going to fight against a system that is producing weak men is for men like you and I to stand up and say, no longer are we going to sit back and watch that. We're going to be in leadership. And that way, whenever somebody steps to us with a problem or something that's incorrect, we have no problem with checking them and telling them that's not going to fly on my watch because I'm a strong leader and strong leaders produce more strong leaders. That's why you have to be leading because once you start leading, it's going to make your son want to lead. And when you tell your son, you don't follow son. He's going to be it's going to be easy for him to grasp that concept eventually because he's going to see the way that you lead and the capacity that you're leading in. So I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, if you didn't catch anything else from this video, drive your sons to be leaders. Drive your younger brothers to be leaders. Drive your friends and those that are around you in your inner circle to stop running from leadership. Stop running from marriage, too. Stop running from the responsibility of taking care of a wife and some kids. Stop running from the responsibility of being in a committed relationship to a woman that you have to take care of, that you have to go out on a limb for, that you have to break your back for, because that's what men were birthed to do. And when you do it, man, I'm telling you, there's no feeling like it in the world to be responsible for a person. I remember years ago cracking jokes with my friend, and he said, man, you always run to responsibility, man. He said, man, you're the most responsible dude I know. And as he's laughing, we both laughing about it. And he said that because I was about to get married at the time but you know as funny as it was it was true because I did always run to being responsible or taking on roles of responsibility because that's who I was and real leaders do that it's no way that you can watch a real leader be close to a real leader be affected by a real leader and not desire to want to lead in some capacity shape or form it's almost, it's, almost, it's almost impossible. It's impossible to be raised by a strong man and not be a strong man and take on some of the roles of that leadership. Now, let me close with this. If you did not have a father in your house, my heart goes out to you because I had a dad. If you, Or if you did not have a father in your life, period. If your dad ran out on you, didn't take care of you, didn't show up, didn't step up, and you didn't know what it meant to have a male role model in your life, I'm sorry, fellas. But that's our reality of the country that we live in. That's our reality, um, even on some of the other countries now. Fatherlessness has plagued our society and is destroying it, especially in the black community. So black men especially that are out there that are hearing this video, I'm telling you, step up and take charge of your life, number one. Step up and take charge of your household, number two. Step up and take charge of your son's life, number three. And it's on you. It's your responsibility to lead 
in desire to lead, to desire to stand in leadership roles, to desire to want to lead in your community, to desire to want to lead in your churches, to desire to want to lead in your jobs, and to make it your priority to lead in your household so that your woman can respect you and it'll make it easier for you to conquer things and goals and ambitions and things that you have in life. Because when you step into a room, when you go to a business meeting, when you go to a job interview, and when you walk into your job, they look at you and say, I admire that person because of the way he carries himself because he's a leader. We need more leaders and we need more men to step up and be leaders. So men, stop running from your responsibilities. Stop running from the desire to be a leader. If it's in you, go out and do it. I mean this week. If you have an opportunity that's in front of you and you see this video and you hear my voice, do it. Don't run from it. Conquer it, accomplish it, and do it while the time is still available. Do the work during the day, the Bible says, because when the nighttime cometh, no man has time to work. So thank you guys for watching. God bless you. Comment, like, subscribe, share my video, and guys, make sure you're leading in your lives. God bless.